Hi everyone, we are back with At The Table with Chris and Carl, uh, our two perennial experts. And uh, today what we're gonna focus on is new versus uh, old uh, gen genetics. Uh, there's been a proliferation of uh, new breeding in the last uh, 10 years, but some of those, uh, what we like to call ye old favorites, like Salvia May Knight are still hanging around. And Carl, I know you've been working very closely with perennial breeding for uh, several years now, and I guess, can you tell me maybe what the benefits are of new, like a new salvia versus salvia may night? Well, absolutely. And, you know, we understand why growers stick with the tried and true because they've been tried and true. They've been around for a long time. Okay. And I'd like to start out just by encouraging growers, as you had mentioned, there are so many new items on the market to just start trialing and see what works for them. And what I think the growers are going to find are advantages like for instance, salvia mainite has a tendency to what we call bird's nest. After it finishes flowering, it sort of falls open, it starts to regrow from the center, and either needs to be cut back or uh, it looks pretty ugly for a long time. So for a landscaper, for instance, there's a lot of extra work in salvia mainite. Now, a grower can bring in a variety like Lyrical Blues, get similar profile to mainite, and they don't bird's nest, they just hold themselves up. Or they can get in a variety like uh, salvia rose marble or blue marble, much bigger flowers, greater flower power, and more cycles of flowers through the course of the season. So there are advantages, but you know, like I said, growers have sort of locked on to that variety. Well, I know that one, so I'm not even gonna take a look at others. And, and I think the opportunity is there for them to uh, refresh their mix, be more interesting to their customers, and provide products that will perform better. Okay. I like what you mentioned about the sampling, you know, about the trialing. Um, the best thing for me is, you know, seeing is believing. You know, my own gardens, I learned a lot from my own gardens, and one of the most important things I've learned since I've taken this position is going around seeing the different trial gardens around the country. North, south, east, west, finding out how these perform in each region and how it performs for each grower. And then, you know, that's the most valuable information for me. So trialing side by side, plant a salvia may night and plant a salvia blue marble in your garden side by side and see how they perform for yourself. So that's uh, my best advice for anybody. Okay. Now what about uh, advantages of newer genetics for the grower like in production? And I know Chris, you spent a lot of time in, in your career in production. Mm -hmm. Are there, do you see any benefits to some of the newer genetics in, in the greenhouse? Uh, much, much of the breeding has been focused on solving problems for growers and solving problems for the gardeners as well. And so we're breeding more mildew resistance, let's say, for uh, the Phlox paniculatas, whereas old-fashioned varieties will turn completely white with mildew, and the newer ones are much more resistant to that. Uh, the new breeding is also giving us more first-year flowering opportunities. Uh, some of the oldest, you know, old-fashioned Coreopsis they all required uh, overwintering to build a flower profusely the first year. Uh, let's say Aquilegia, you know, one of your traditional, you have to overwinter. Well, we've got a new Aquilegia now that's a first year flowering Aquilegia. So we're really looking to solve grower problems, improve the performance for the customers and uh, make things easier for everybody and ultimately have a nicer garden. Okay. Now, uh, Carl, a lot of times I hear that uh, the supply chain uh, is has been improved over the years, well, just the last few years, with these newer newer genetics. Can you tell our growers, you know, why why that might be? Sure. And you know, you mentioned salvia may night earlier. And when I go around and visit growers, visit rooting stations, it's pretty common that they'll have a yield percentage on May night of around 85%. And, and that's okay. typically a pretty good grower. Um, when I look at the new genetics that are out there on the market, a salvia, something like salvia blue bayou, for instance, which is a, another great alternative to May night, we're getting near 100% yields just because part of the selection pressure uh, when we're selecting new varieties is, does it solve that propagation problem? The last thing we want to do, whether it's a new seed salvia or whether it's a vegetative salvia, is put something on the market that is worse, it's lower yields, and therefore more expensive to the grower. So I think when a grower looks at their overall cost invested and they're seeing near 100% or maybe even uh, a full 100% yield in their propagation, um, it's worthwhile looking at that for that reason. Excellent. Well, we're, uh, we are all out of time for this session of At the Table with Chris and Carl. Thank you guys very much for uh, your information. So basically what I can see is if growers want to try 
try try some of the uh, the new new material. They should see some some benefits. Uh, also, those improvements in uh, our supply chain as uh, as well. Uh, for any other uh, questions, uh, please visit us at uh, darwinperennials.com uh, for uh, more information on any of these new varieties. So, until next time, we'll talk to you soon.